Right, I'd like to just talk about some of the questions um, that have come in. Okay, One of the questions is, can a student take more than one elective program? So as you remember, I mentioned we offer the music elective and Chinese language elective programs. Okay? So we offer both and students can indeed join both if they qualify and are selected. However, do note that they can only take up one scholarship. I have quite a few questions here about mother tongue languages as well. Okay, um, So I think there's a question about uh, what if my child is weak in mother tongue? Okay, will he or she be at a disadvantage? Okay. Um, I think we want to reassure you that we provide support for all students through consultations and a very rigorous support program. Okay. And we also encourage students to learn the language at a pace and level that is suitable for them and that they can excel in. I think another very important thing is that you may have seen earlier in the slide that we do a lot of work on encouraging passion for the mother tongue okay, um, through various programs and various cultural immersions. I'll just share with you one from this year, uh, which is that our, our Tech 4 students, our IT4 students, uh, took part in uh, performing arts and drama training. And they also got to listen to a talk uh, given by a Gazai performer to learn more about the Chinese culture. So this really inspires students and makes them want to learn their mother tongue and to do well in it. Let me look at a couple of more questions. I do have uh, all my colleagues here with me today, the heads of the various departments, uh, my school leaders as well, who are all looking through the questions as well uh, and helping me with the answers. So do give me one moment. Okay, I have a question about um, the O-level track. Does TJC offer the O-level track? Um, and I think related to that, okay, what if my child doesn't perform well in the IP? Okay, what, what can happen? Now, I think the first thing that I do want to clarify is that we do not offer the O-level track. Okay? Uh, we only offer the integrated program. right? So there's no O-levels in TJC. The only O-level subject that our students take is the mother tongue language. Yeah. Um, so what happens if my child is not performing well or if my child is failing? Okay? So again, I do want to reassure you that we support all our students. Uh, we do know that this is quite uh, an intense period for them and we want to help them manage their studies. So we monitor them very closely. That's part of my job uh, as the Dean of the Integrated Program. Okay? Um, and I work very closely with all of the heads of department, all of the subject teachers and uh, the civics teachers as well. So that's also why we have two civics teachers per class, so that all of our students can receive close monitoring, whether it is academically or just in terms of their general well-being. Okay? So for academic performance, we have lots of support structures. Um, our teachers do lots of one-on-one -on -one consultations with students just to help them clarify areas that they don't understand. And for those that need more rigorous support, we do have that as well. Okay, so just be assured that we work to support all our students. Okay, right. Uh, I have another question about Tamil language and higher Tamil language. Okay, do you offer that for IP1? Um, so yes, we, we do. Okay. In fact, we offer higher mother tongue languages and mother tongue languages in all three uh, languages, Chinese language, Malay language, and Tamil language. Now, um, I think parents are also asking how their child qualifies to offer higher mother tongue, right? So this is based on MOE's allocation at IP1 and their recommendation, okay? Uh, and subsequently, we also recommend students to offer higher mother tongue or mother tongue express uh, year on year based on their performance in IP1 and IP2. So as I said earlier, uh, we try to find the best level for your child to drive and excel. Right, let me just take a couple more questions. Okay. Right, so I, there's a question about class sizes. I think I've been talking about the teachers, so uh, you want to know how many students in a class, okay? So at our lower IP, right, we have about 35 students per class. 
Uh, but at upper IP, so when they move to SEC 3 and SEC 4, the class sizes actually become smaller uh, so that students can receive more individualized attention as they move on with their subject disciplines. So at upper IP, it's around 20 to 30 students. Okay. Uh, and by cohort, there's about 170 students per cohort. Okay, I have questions about um, some more logistical matters, I think. What time uh, does school start and end? Okay, so school starts at either 7.30 or 7.55 uh, in the morning, okay, except for Wednesdays when students have a bit of a late start at 8.20, okay, uh, and normal lessons end by 2.30, about 2.30 p.m., okay. Uh, now, the rest of the afternoon is actually dedicated to enrichment activities, such as I mentioned, Tomasic Academy. Um, some of the cohort enrichment programs that I mentioned as well, uh, as well as CCAs, of course, and the elective programs, so music and Chinese electives, all right? Okay, I have some clarifications on the TJC Ex uh, Academic Excellence Award. So some people are asking about the specific achievement levels, okay? So that will be achievement level six or better, right? Which means achievement level four, five or six. Okay, so I'll just repeat that one more time. To qualify for the TJC Academic Excellence Award, you would need AL4, AL5, or AL6, and you would also need to be a Singaporean or a Singapore permanent resident. Let's see, uh, questions on, I, I think quite a number of parents are interested in robotics. Okay, so are there robotics competitions uh, uh, programs in, CC, uh, in TJC? Um, so as I mentioned just now, actually all of our students uh, do a robotics enrichment program, okay, the level robotics program at the end of set one. Uh, they also do computing uh, as part of the curriculum in set one and set two. So this is part of the skills and knowledge subject that I mentioned earlier. Okay. Now, for students who are very talented or very interested in robotics, they could join our IFC club, okay, uh, which provides for their interest in robotics. And also, they can join National Olympiads in Informatics. Okay, so our teachers mentor this group of students who show that interest uh, and prepare them to join such competitions, right? Okay, uh, Plans for relocation. So I think some parents are, want to clarify exactly when we are relocating. So let me just repeat one more time. Okay. At the end of 2022, we will move out of this Bajok South campus where we are currently located. Uh, so we will be at the TPJC holding site or the former TPJC holding site from 2023, 2024 and 2025. In January 2026, uh, we are scheduled to move back to this Badok South site. And of course, by that time, we will have our very exciting brand new campus. Okay, uh, there's a question on DSA admission for basketball boys specifically. Do you provide DSA admission for basketball boys? Yes, we do. Okay, so as you may have remembered from my earlier slides, basketball is one of our talent uh, areas for CCAs, okay? Uh, no, we don't take in a fixed number every year. Uh, it just depends on the number of students who apply and their experience of each applicant. All right? Okay, a further question about PSA leadership. Okay, so what uh, qualifications or criteria is the school looking for? Now, um, I would encourage you to visit our school website. Um, like I said, at the end of April, early May, after MOE's DSA announcement. And we will put the exact criteria for all of our talent areas at that point. Yeah, um, But for leadership, I can just tell you generally that we look at a holistic ba uh, basket of, of indicators. And particularly for students who are holding key leadership posi positions in primary school or have had leadership experience perhaps within the wider community. Okay, so just generally, that's what we are looking out for. Okay, uh, right, I have questions, quite a few questions about CCAs. What's the frequency of CCAs? Okay, uh, what days are CCAs on? All right, so our CCA days are twice a week on Wednesdays and Fridays. Okay, so again, as I said, they're in the afternoon. Um, but 
leading up to competitions or performances or certain events, there may be a few more training sessions for that period. Okay. Okay, just give me one moment. There's lots of questions coming in. Okay, uh, how many subjects or modules in IP1 to IP4? Okay, that's a pretty big question because it does change year on year. So what I showed you in the slides earlier uh, were the subjects that our IP1 and 2 students take. So I think perhaps the best thing to, I, I can do is to maybe direct you to our e-open house microsite, which has just gone live. Okay, So you'll be able to see all of the subjects that students take at the various levels on that website. Uh, and I think even better, uh, you'll not only get to see what subjects they take, you'll get to hear and, and watch examples of their work as we've got various student videos, uh, all of our heads of department actually are introducing their subjects and curriculum on the website as well. So you could go ahead to watch those videos and to look at that material. Okay, so again, I direct you to our e-open house website. I'll be showing you the QR code for that uh, at the end of my Q&A segment. Okay, so another question about mother tongue languages. Do you offer Hindi? Uh, as a mother tongue language in your school. Okay? So we encourage students who want to offer Hindi to contact the Hindi Society and DNP and to attend Saturday lessons at the respective language centres. So the reason for this is that they can best learn in a structured language learning environment and the centre can ensure uh, high standards of learning. Okay? Right. Uh, parents will, however, for any alternatives, uh, parents will need to write into the school and request for in parallel lessons uh, on the TJC campus. Okay, so if that's the situation, then parents should group together to make personal arrangements with the teacher from DAB or the Hindi Society. And they will need to also ensure, uh, work with the school to ensure that these arrangements do not affect students' timetable lessons. Okay. All right. Um, I have a question about MTL exemption. Okay, so if the, you know, my daughter has an MTL exemption, can she still be eligible for IP at TJC? Yes, she can. Okay. Um, what will the holding school site be like? Well, we are actually working with MOE to be very sure that the site is uh, up to whatever we need and all of our requirements as an IP school. Uh, again, I encourage you to look at the Open House website because we've included a video there uh, on things you might need to know about, the, uh, about our holding site, including how to get there, uh, etc. It's actually located in a very convenient uh, location with the MRT station right in front. Uh, so again, I'd like to direct you to our microsite and you can find out more there. We just look through the questions. I think we, we've um, answered quite a, a few. Okay, do we have a triple pure science combination? Okay, uh, so for the lower IP in set one and set two, all students will do green science, which does give them the foundation in bio, physics, and chemistry. Okay, and then when they move up to upper IP or upper secondary, yes, it is absolutely possible uh, to offer three science subjects. Okay, um, yeah. So, so that is possible in upper secondary. Uh, of course, um, the child would have had to have performed quite strongly in the sciences to do that. Okay. Okay. So, can we apply? This is a question regarding DSA. Okay. So, can we apply for two options as part of DSA applications to TJC? Uh, for example, one under leadership and another for academic. Yes, you can. Okay. Um, so, again, when the DSA information from MOE comes out, I think. Uh, that will answer all your questions about how to go about applying for the DSA and how to manage the various talent areas. Mm 
Okay, uh, I, there are some parents who are asking about uh, the school being an IPJC school can interact just between IP and JC students. So that's actually one of the things that we are quite proud of, um, having both our IP and JC students under the same roof. Uh, it actually is a real advantage to our IP students because they are able to interact with their seniors and our JC students are indeed very nurturing uh, and very understanding when they work with our IP students. I mean, you met Zheng Hao just now, and that's an example of the kind of very nurturing mentoring presence that our elder students take. Okay. Um, another advantage is that, of course, having both the IP and JC under the same roof, uh, it means that our IP students are able to have the benefit of working with JC teachers or in JC subject areas um, when that's appropriate and when that will stretch them appropriately. Okay, so of course I think uh, we are getting quite a lot of questions on the AL cutoff point to enter TJC. Okay, um, so we don't know what that AL is um, yet. All right, um, and of course I think as everyone knows, it, there is a new scoring system. Okay, so the cutoffs will actually depend on uh, market demand or you know how many people apply to TJC. Um, okay. Right, so, so that's a question we can't quite answer at the moment, okay? but we do strongly encourage you to apply because uh, we really very strongly believe in the quality of our IP programs. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay, I have a question also about how does the school support uh, students' well-being? Because yes, uh, I think as some parents have noted, uh, the, the program is quite an intensive one, okay? not just academically. I do want to stress that we have lots of holistic programs uh, for students. And I hope Madam Tan's uh, sharing as well as an IP parent uh, also you know, gives you the perspective that our students really enjoy the kind of programs that they engage in. Okay? So uh, while, of course, we teach them to strive for excellence, okay, we also emphasize being engaged being passionate about what you do, and really following your aspirations and your dreams. Um, so what do we do to look out for students' mental health and well-being? As you heard from Madam Tan, our teachers have actually got very, very strong rapport uh, with our students. So that comes from the fact that it's a small cohort. Okay, uh, We have two civics teachers per class, which means that each student gets a lot of attention. And of course, we know our students very well because they are with us for such a long period of time. Okay. So with all of that, that's actually our first line in supporting our students and looking out uh, for their well-being in general. Okay. And um, we make a lot of time for, for teacher-student conferencing to check on our students, see how they're doing, and give them the support that they need. Okay. Um, and we also do teach them to look after their own well-being through our very rigorous guidance programs. Okay. So things like how to plan and manage your time, um, how to manage stress, Okay, uh, even how to manage you know, group work and relationships. Um, so I would say our students are given a lot of guidance in those areas and it is a very caring school. Um, we really do look out for our students' well-being. Okay, so uh, this is another question about IP to JC. So the question is, are IP students integrated with the school admitted JC 1 and 2 students uh, when they move on to IP 5 and 6. So just to explain that uh, at JC level, JC 1, we do have an intake of students via the JAE admissions, which means that they come in from secondary schools after they do their O-levels. So the answer is yes, absolutely. Our students are all integrated together at the JC level. So they have the opportunity you know, to make many, many new friends, uh, forge many new relationships with the JE cohort of students who come in after the O levels. Okay, so questions about art. Yeah, what's TJC's plan to nurture students who excel in art? Okay, so is there an art club or an art CCA? So that's the question that has come in. Okay, um, there's actually a visual arts component in their lower secondary aesthetics program. Right? Uh, so all students, I, if you heard, remember me mentioning earlier, all students take an aesthetics program okay, uh, that is made up of various modules. One is visual art, uh, the others are dance, um, drama, and music. Okay? So we have a very strong focus actually in the aesthetics. Right? Um, but for art specifically, we also have an art interest group. 
um, who meet at intervals to learn new art skills. Uh, and if actually you're interested uh, you know, in, in looking at some of our students' artwork, again, on the micro site, uh, there's lots of information about our aesthetics program. And actually in the videos that you will see, for example, our campus tour, um, the illustrations are done by our own students. Okay? So there's a very vibrant, uh, I think, interest in the arts that we try to nurture. Okay, uh, I have an interesting question from an ex-student. Uh, I'm, I'm going to read it. Yeah, uh, I'm an ex-TJC student in 1996. However, I find that the current TJC is not what it used to be. My question is, what is TJC's plan to catch up to its previous glory? Um, so interestingly, we have someone asking about the standards in TJC today. So I think on behalf of all of my school leaders and, and the rest of the staff, I want to reassure you that we take great pride in our standards of excellence. And I hope that has come through uh, in the talk and in our, my sharing about our programs and our plans for our students. Uh, our IP students have been, and even our JAE students as well, um, they've outdone themselves at the A-levels every year. And in fact, this year was a very, very strong showing indeed. Uh, and if you remember from my principal's introduction, uh, welcome address this morning, okay, uh, in the 2020 A-levels, IP students have a median of 86.3 and a mean of 84 UAS, okay? So I think um, that speaks to our interest in, you know, in maintaining and, and even raising the standards of TJC year on year. So we strive really for excellence in our students and in our whole college. Okay. Um, there's another question about aesthetics that I would like to address. So is it compulsory to study aesthetics and what if my child has no talent in it? Um, yes, aesthetics is actually compulsory at IP1 and IP2 levels, but let me explain why. Um, it is not about, uh, of course, like I said earlier, I think someone asked about art. Uh, for students who are talented, we have many plans to stretch them and many programs to stretch them. But we actually believe that an aesthetics education is very important for all students uh, and it's not about talent, it's about teaching students to be expressive, to be confident communicators, um, not just through speaking, but in a variety of different ways. So you can communicate through music, you can communicate through dance, okay? Um, so quite a number of our students, you know, they're not dancers. When they start with a dance program, they might be a little, you know, oh, but I'm not a dancer. But they end up enjoying it because they, are, they really learn how to present themselves with confidence, with poise, they learn how to work in a group, and they learn to develop an appreciation for that aesthetic form. And I think that's really what uh, we want to encourage in our students, and not just, um, you know, whether or not, it's not just about whether or not they are talented. Um, yeah, so I hope you, you can see the value in that. And again, you know, I'm very proud personally of the students' work. I always try and, and visit their exhibitions or, or their performances, and I highly encourage you to have a look at what's on our microsite. Um, there's some really nice student work there. Okay, there's um, an interesting question as well. Does TJC offer career coaching to students? Yes, absolutely. Um, so what this person means by career coaching is coaching students to find their areas of interest and potentially which course to pers uh, or university to progress to after TJC. Absolutely, we do. Um, in fact, I think this is a very important part of the work that we do. So we have a very strong education and career guidance program, okay? And we have um, the University Scholarships and Placements Office, or the USPO. So this is a dedicated office in TJC. It's right along our front corridor, so our students pass it every day. Um, and this is where students go when they need some advice about, um, some of them might be thinking about careers, especially our older students in JC. But for our younger students, you know, some of them perhaps uh, looking for, you know, just interested in what jobs might be like, you know, um, and what can I do if I'm, in, if I'm good at art, what kind of jobs could I maybe do in the future? They just want to find out more. Uh, we actually also help students find out about their own strengths. Um, so what might they be interested in? What might they be passionate in? And that's the focus for our younger students at IP 1 to 4, in fact, okay? Um, and this is supported. We have an ECG counsellor who is... Um, in school a uh, few times a week. Uh, we have teachers, uh, particularly from the student development department, uh, who are trained in giving students education and career guidance. Uh, and we also have some very interesting events for students. For example, we have the Career and Scholarship Higher Education Fair. 
Uh, now, while, although it says careers and scholarships, we actually even expose our youngest, um, you know, IP1 and IP2 students to this because there's a special component for them to just find out what their interests and passions are. Okay, uh, so we do a lot of work on education and career guidance. Yeah. Okay, many parents are here to get information on the DSA process. Okay, um, and what advice do you have for us? Yes, I understand. Uh, unfortunately, you know, according to MOE's timelines, I do need to wait for the MOE um, announcement to be out before we can give you more information. So my advice for you right now would be, firstly, to take note of our talent areas. Uh, secondly, to visit the Open House website so that you can find out more about the talent area that you are interested in. Um, so again, like I said, you'll be able to hear from the teachers in charge. Um, you'll be able to to uh, yeah, hear from the teachers in charge, watch videos, look at this kind of work that our students do. And then I think once the information comes out from MOD, and it will be coming out very soon, so I think we're looking at end of April to early May, uh, you'll be able to make a decision. And at that point, do visit our website again, right? And all of the information, including, you know, what kind of selection test, what criteria are we looking for, etc. All of that will be spelled out very clearly on the website. Okay, so I think some parents were quite interested in what I was saying about the USPO. So we have more questions coming in about that. Um, right, so this was a question on preparation for medical schools specifically and scholarship applications. So yes, um, if a student comes to us with a very specific interest, um, absolutely we will, uh, we do have all the, the resources needed and the people needed uh, to advise that student on how to, to progress in that area. In fact, this is quite a common one. Uh, students do come with us uh, particularly with interest in, in the medical field, uh, in the law field as well. Okay, so I hope that we, I have reassured you uh, that we have a proper channel to um, prepare our students for this. Okay, so I, I, I just want to come and take uh, one final question. Um, okay, and are there any major learning journeys or overseas trip opportunities? Absolutely, we do have that. Uh, I shared some of those with you earlier in the talk. Uh, so we have a very robust internationalization program. Unfortunately, I think as everyone knows, uh, we are not able to travel right at this moment. But um, once you know the uh, travel is, is available to all of us again, we look forward to continuing those programs. We have quite a number of them. And as I said earlier, in the meantime, um, we are not just going to sit around and, and wait for you know travel to open up. We are bringing as many international programs into TJC as possible. I think one of the, the uh, benefits of this period is that everything has opened up online. So our students can still get the benefit of that interaction with people from overseas. Um, so the Global Girl Leading Conference that I mentioned just now is one example of this. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, we, we are able to get, uh, allow even more students to take part um, because it is online. So while we wait for everything to settle again, um, this is what we are doing to encourage our students to have a global outlook. Okay, and with that last question today, okay, um, okay, I will we will come to the end of the Q and A section, uh, and I want to really thank you for your active participation. Now I'm sorry if I was not able to get to your specific question, but uh, I want to reassure you that you are welcome to get in touch with us anytime. Okay, uh, especially if you have further questions after this morning's talk, uh, after looking at our website, or even after the DSA details are announced. Okay, so on the screen right now, you will be able to see our contact details. Uh, you will also be able to see a QR code. Now, if you scan that QR, QR code, uh, it will lead you to our eOpen House microsite. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, it has just gone live this morning, right? So um, lots of the materials that I was talking about will be available on that website. And um, from, I think, tomorrow, okay, this talk will also be available if you want to go back on any of the material that I have covered, okay? So um, on that note, I would like to say a very big thank you to all of you for attending this morning's eOpen House talk. Uh, and again, please go and explore our website, okay? And I hope you have a fruitful time exploring that, right? And I look forward to welcoming you to TJC next year. And to those primary six students who are listening in, I want to wish you all the best for your PSLE. Okay, take care of yourselves, work hard, and I'm sure you will do yourself and your parents proud. So with that, 
I will end the talk this morning. I wish everyone a very good rest of the day and a wonderful weekend.